Okay, shall we get started? Great. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, I have to say that we could not do our annual grant making round without the help of all of you. Um, and we know that we have not assigned, made the assignments yet for the applications. We're still working on that. Um, so we're hoping that most of you will be um, will be reviewers this year. And if you are this for this round, and if you're not selected this round to be a remove a reviewer. We also have the ARPA funds coming up. Um, so you may be called upon later this year to, to either do it again or do it for the first time. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, before I begin, my name is Ann Hawbrick. I am the Grants and Program Senior Manager here at the Regional Arts Commission. And I will be joined in this presentation by my colleague and friend, Chloe Smith. Hi. Hey. And Chloe is the Grants and Programs Manager, and then also we couldn't do what we're doing without the tremendous help of Lee Winter, um, and Lee is the Grants Please. Operations Manager. Um, do either of you have anything to say before we start, Chloe or Lee? I just want to thank everybody for being here, and I'm excited to kind of go through what we have prepared for you guys today. Thank you. Um, I want to let you know a couple of things before we get started in the presentation. Um, we will take questions after the presentation, so um, you will either ask those in real time or you can put them in the Q&A and we'll get to them at the end. Um, second of all, there will be a recording available of this presentation and the slide deck of the PowerPoint later on this week. Um, so you may refer to one or both of those things, as well as the grants guidelines that you will find on the RAC website. And um, also, right after you close out on this Zoom call, there will be a brief anonymous survey. So please fill that out so we can continue to make our processes even better. We just started um, working with Blackboard, which is the the grant management system that we're using right now. So we are still getting accustomed to it as you, as many of you probably know, um, there are a lot of bells and whistles to these systems and sometimes they can be a pain in the neck and other times they can run seamlessly. So um, thank you for your patience with any issues we may have. We don't anticipate any, but one never knows. So um, thanks so much. Um, if you don't mind, and I know you're all very polite people, but stay on mute until we have the question and answer period, and we'll be able to get through this pretty quickly, I think. So um, here we go. To start off with, we like to let you know where RAC is and kind of like what our values are, what our mission and vision is. And so we're going to go through a couple of those things before we get started. As the leading public catalyst for arts and culture in St. Louis, the Regional Arts Commission, RAC, leverages the power of creativity to strengthen and enrich our community. RAC envisions a full creative life for every St. Louisian. St. Louis as a growing and captivating arts and culture destination, and a community rich with opportunities and resources that promote and sustain artists. Now we'll just kind of walk through um, RAC's guiding principles and core values, and we'll go ahead and start with our guiding principles. So we invest in the region's arts and culture through our grants, programs, and special initiatives. We believe in diversity, racial equity, accessibility, and inclusion. We build partnerships that strengthen our community. We are passionate champions that support and recognize artists. And we believe that every child deserves a well-rounded education that includes the arts. Moving on to our core values, they embody our culture, spirit, and dedication to living our mission. They keep us grounded and help us make good decisions about everything we do. We are passionate champions for arts and culture. We are accountable stewards of the public trust. We are committed to practices that promote diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility. We are socially and civically engaged community catalyst, and we are servant leaders. RAC's mission, vision, guiding principles, and core values are a balance between our passion and interest and the needs of our community. The grants committee and grants team 
uh, work to be sure the grant cycle reflects our mission, vision, principles, and core values, um, which helps to ensure that our processes run smoothly or as smoothly as possible. <laughs> um, for efficiency's sake, we are combining both the program support training with the artist support training. Um, for the most part, but not always this afternoon. If you hear me talk, it'll be mostly about the program support. And when you hear Chloe talk, it will mostly be about the artist support. Some of you have indicated um, that you would like to do one or the other. And many of you have said you would, you would be willing to do both. So um, there you have it. I'm gonna go over the program support overview, first of all. So what is program support? Um, RAC's program support grant category, provides project-based support to arts and culture organizations and non-arts nonprofit organizations in the production and or presentation of artistic activities. These ongoing and one-time projects broaden and deepen audience participation and decrease access to the arts for visitors and residents throughout the St. Louis region. We have, um, these are the eligibility requirements for the program support. So there has to be a local focus. Uh, arts programs and projects must occur in St. Louis City or St. Louis County. You may notice that some of the program support applicants have an address outside of St. Louis, but as long as their programming occurs in St. Louis City or County, it's A-OK -okay with us. Um, they must be a 501c3 organization in good status as a nonprofit corporation in the state of Missouri and have their tax exempt status from the Internal Revenue Service or be a unit of federal or local government, such as a library, county, or municipal agency. This must be about arts programming. The proposed program's primary purpose. PPPPP must be the creation, presentation, or utilization of art. And the time frame for which the applicants are applying must take place be between July 1, 2023 through June 30, 2024. So you'll pay attention to all of that um, in the application. The categories and program support are, are multi multidisciplinary, but we've got three categories right now. So it's arts and culture programs, which are performances, concerts, exhibitions, readings, publications, arts education, and other similar programs. Cultural festivals, parades, and special events, which are events that enhance the economic vitality of St. Louis and increase the region's visibility and desirability as the destination for out of town visitors. And the other category in program support is arts-based community development, programs using the arts as a tool for social change and or civic engagement. Take it away, Chloe, for artist support. And here we go. We're going to go through artist support just like program support. So what is artist support? Um, the Regional Arts Commission's artist support grants serve as funding for the career advancement of individual artists. This grant provides direct funds for an individual artist or an artist collective's project needs or creative opportunities in all artistic disciplines. Direct support enables diverse artists of all disciplines to advance their careers and complete creative projects. It is designed to be flexible and accessible and to encourage creativity, innovation, entrepreneurship, and sustained commitment to artistic work. Grant funds may be designated for, but not limited to, equipment and materials, rental space, arts-related travel, conference fees, project completion, salaries, professional and artistic development, training, and other resources for an individual artist of all disciplines. And finally, applicants can apply for up to $7,500. And you might have noticed something new that we mentioned is artist collectives. So new this year is our artist collective. And so what is an artist collective? Um, it's it's mainly a group that consists of two or more consistent members who have a history of creating together for at least one year prior to the application submission date. So we are asking that they've been working together for a while to create work. Um, 501c3 organizations are not eligible to apply, so organizations could not apply as a collective. All members of the collective must meet the eligibility requirements outlined below. Um, we'll get to those on the next page um, or slide. 
and one member of the collective may submit the application and serve as the application contact. The applying member will ultimately be responsible for signing the application and, if awarded, the terms and condition agreement. And finally, artists may apply for either an individual artist grant or an artist collective grant, for, but not both. So that'll be something you want to be mindful of while completing your reviews, that you don't see a name as an artist collective and then also as an individual. But getting into our artist support grant eligibility requirements, um, we have an age requirement. Um, the artist um, must be 19 years or older, and of course that applies to all members of a collective. Um, we have a non-graduate student requirement, meaning the artist is not enrolled as a full-time undergraduate student. We have a local focus requirement, meaning the artist is a current resident of St. Louis City or County and has maintained primary residence in St. Louis City or County for at least one year, and we require documentation to prove that. Um, we have a current work requirement, which for the individual artist means that in the past three years, the artist has created and presented their own original works to the public or performed for the public and will ask for verifiable documentation. And then for the artist collective, this means at least one of the artists has created and presented their own original works in the past three years and the collective has created or presented together for at least one year. And then time frame, similar to program support, the program for which you are applying, the program or project, opportunity or need, whatever the artists are looking for, um, must take place between July 1st, 2023 and June 30th of 2024. And then two reminders at the bottom are that each of these requirements must be met by each member of the artist collective. And then new this year is that we've removed the previous RAC grant recipient requirement. Um, there was a requirement that for artist support grants, you couldn't apply within 16 months of having received an artist support grant before. Um, we've removed those requirements. So if you've seen any, if you see any familiar names that you know were awarded last year, they are eligible. We're letting everyone reapply for more funding. Thank you, Chloe. Sure. Um, next, we're going to go over the grant application review criteria, and I will say that we worked pretty darn hard at simplifying and streamlining the whole application process. Um, so we made the question, the criteria and the questions as similar as possible for both program support and artist support. And we're just trying to remove as many barriers to accessibility um, and make it make it a more equitable process. So we hope that you you will find that too, particularly if you have reviewed for us in the past or if you have been an applicant or a grantee in the past. Um, so take it away, Chloe, on the criteria for the artist support. Yeah, so to Anne's point, we have three main review criteria for program support and artist support grants this year. If you've reviewed for us in the past, artist support grants had five review criteria, and now they have three, just like program support, um, and they are the exact same. So. First, we're going to be looking at cultural and artistic essentials, and those will be weighted at 40%. And for artist support grants, this means a culturally and artistically significant practice or work that contributes to the creative life of the artist and ultimately to St. Louis. Community benefit for artist support grants will also be weighted at 30%, and this means the artist demonstrates broad community benefit with a practice or work and contributes to diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility in the community. And then finally, capacity and sustainability also weighted at 30%. For artist support grants means the artist is intentional about artistic practice, capacity, and sustainability. Great. Thanks, Chloe. Um, I will go over the program support review criteria. And first, the cultural and artistic essentials are weighted at 40%. An organization that produces or presents culturally and artistically significant work that supports a full creative life for every St. Louisian. Uh, the community benefit is weighted at 30%, and that is a program that demonstrates broad community benefit and contributes to advancing diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility <coughs> Excuse me, in the community. Hang on a second. <coughs> I think it's the pollen in the air. <laughs> <clears throat> and then capacity and sustainability is weighted at 30%. And that's an organization that intentionally plans for program capacity and sustainability. <clears throat> uh, 
<clears throat> in terms of, sorry about that, in terms of the application overview, I will go over the program support application. And, um, and you'll see in the guidelines that for each of those criteria we just went through, that there are a num number of things to guide you along in the rubric. So that should be helpful to you as you're scoring. Um, in terms of the program support application, the first part is the organizational information where the organization must upload a board of directors list. They must upload, if they're applying with a fiscal sponsor, a fiscal sponsorship letter. And then there's the program information. Um, the cultural and artistic essentials weighted at 40%. There's three questions. <coughs> Um, Chloe, do you want to take this and then I'll yeah, jump definitely. back in so I can get rid of this cough? Thank you. No problem. So carrying on from where Anne left off, um, cultural and artistic essentials is weighted at 40%. And there's three questions each for that. The first question will be about their essentials, where they'll be kind of detailing their program, the who, what, when, where, and why. The second question will be addressing cultural and artistic significance of the program. And the third question will address program goals. The second section of the application will be for community benefit, weighted at 30%, also which there are three questions. The first question will address the intended audience of the program. The second question will address DEIA efforts. And the third question will address community engagement. And this upload, which is optional, is a DEI statement, policy, or plan that the organization has. This Technically, the third section of our application here is dedicated to capacity and sustainability, also weighted at 30%. And again, three questions. Um, they'll be asked the first question about the budget. And of course, you can see there's a corresponding upload for the budget. The second question is detailing the organizational's financial health. And they'll have an upload for the organizational health worksheet and organizational financial statements to support that second question in this category. And then finally, the third question addresses sustainability. So if you kind of look at the way that this is structured here, there are three grant categories with three questions in each category. So there's a total of nine narrative questions in each application, both for program support and for artist support. So finally, at the end here, the organization will have the opportunity to upload work samples and, of course, a critical review, which is optional. And do you want to add anything to this before we jump on to artist support? No, I think that's good, Chloe. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Um, for the artist support application, um, there is the artist applicant information where they must upload their proof of residency. For the most part, we have checked this box and done that work. Um, and then if the applicant is applying as a collective, they will have to upload the proof of residency for all collective members. And then there's the, the project request information, similar to that of program support, where there are three questions for the cultural and artistic essentials. Of course, that's weighted at 40%. And those um, questions will have to do with, with the essentials, the who, what, when, where, and why of why they're coming to us, um, the artistic significance and their goals. And then we asked them to upload an artist statement. Um, we did give artist support applicants the choice of either doing a narrative artistic statement or a video of their artistic statement. I'm not sure, Chloe, did very many people take take us up on that um, yeah. video? Oh, good. Yeah, That's there were. Great. It was great. That's new for us this year. Um, and then the next section is three questions about community benefit. One addresses audience. One addresses the diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility, and the other addresses community engagement. The next section is capacity and sustainability of the artist or the artist practice, and that's weighted at 30% with three questions. Um, one is a budget upload. Um, two is the art, artist capacity, and three is the sustainability. And included in that, we ask them also to upload a CV or a resume. And we're asking that that be an artistic resume or CV, not a professional one, even though it should be a professional artist one, if that makes sense. Um, a very poor 
stab at humor. <laughs> and then um, we also ask about demographic information, very basic, because we want to have that information to know that we're reaching the right folks. And then they have, um, we ask them to upload their work samples. Chloe, anything you want to add there? No, I think, well, I mean, I could build off a little bit, um, like you said, for the proof of residency for the artist and for collective members, as RAC staff, we do our part to check for eligibility. So everyone that you get is an eligible application deemed by RAC staff. We might ask you a couple of questions about eligibility, just to your knowledge, is this person meeting the eligibility criteria? To your knowledge, is this organization meeting the eligibility review criteria? So there might be a couple of questions on that, but just keep in mind that the application as you have received it is eligible. Great. And that same goes for the program support applicants. We've really checked that eligibility, so um, there shouldn't be any question about it. But please keep it in mind to the best of your knowledge. Um, so the application reading and rating process. <coughs> Here I go again, Chloe. I'm going to ask you to take <laughs> it's it. It's okay. I can jump in. Um, so we kind of broke this out step by step just so we could take you along through the process with us. So our first step here is just we ask that you know the application structure, which is that three review criteria with three questions each is nine total narrative questions. So we just want to make sure that we're grounding you and that you're looking at nine narrative questions for this basic review criteria. So step two is that you'll use the rating scale, which we'll preview on the next slide, to rate each narrative question on the application. And then at this step, you may provide written feedback for each question if you choose. So in the reviewer rubric or what you'll see when you log into Blackboard is that you'll be asked to provide a score, which is required, but then it will be optional for you to um, provide written feedback in a text box for each question. So if you have something you'd like to share with the applicant, you can and put that there. Step three, and this is more of a internal process for RAC staff, the application ratings are averaged amongst reviewers of the same application. And then in step four, the applications will receive a final rating to be used in the application rating key, which we'll also share with you in an upcoming slide. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is the rating scale. We'll dive a little bit more into that. So this is our rating scale example. And so you can see here that this is for question one in the application and it's for art or it's for cultural and artistic essentials, which is weighted at 40%. So the points are a little bit more for the, the questions, the three questions that fall under this category. So we're keep we're grounding you again in the sense that an organization that produces or presents culturally and artistically significant work that supports a full creative life for every St. Louisan. And that is, you know, what the definition of cultural and artistic essentials is. So that's what you'll want to keep in mind. And then we'll kind of use this scale as we go across. So each question in the application is assigned corresponding points based on the review criteria weighting. So since this is 40%, these points are worth a little bit more. Um, and then of course, you'll go through each narrative response looking for evidence of the review criteria, which is noted in this review criteria column. So if you can follow me across the screen here, you can see that question one in the far end of the column to the left, and then you can see the application question itself is in the next column where it says, provide an overview of your program or programs. What is the purpose of the program for which you are applying? And how does the program support the mission of the organization? So that is the, or, the question that the applicant was asked to answer. In this third column, your, this is what you're looking for as a reviewer. So you're going to want to know does this applicant describe the program resources and resources necessary to carry out the program? And then finally, the impact of the program. And do they convey all aspects of the program, including clearly articulated plans, such as location, dates, frequency, et cetera? Are they answering the questions of the who, what, when, where, and why? And then based on what your assumptions are based on the narrative, you can go to the next column 
to pick a rating. So what rating would I give this response? Are you considering it to be an exemplary response, a strong response, a good response, a response that needs work, or really just a response that's weak? And then you can see the rating definition to kind of get an idea of what those ratings mean. So let's say this is, we think, a strong narrative. So that would mean that the application, the applicant, sorry, provides strong evidence of those essentials. And so then you kind of come across to the point range here that's 11 to 13 points. So what number of points do you want to give this narrative? If they're on the high end of strong, you'll want to give them 13. If they're on the low end of strong, you could consider 11 or 12. You know, it we designed this so that it's easier for you as a reviewer to kind of make a decision on point allocation rather than just kind of, you know, giving them a thumbs up or a thumb down. And so it might seem confusing, uh, kind of confusing, um, but it's pretty easy if you can follow the question row all the way across. And so one thing I do want to say about this is that this is the way um, the rating scale is set up and are formatted in the guidelines for program support and artist support. So these are available on our website right now if you want to take a look at exactly what you'll be looking for in each question. So if you're interested in program support or artist support grants, look at those guidelines on our website. They're up. It might look a little different in the review portal, but all of the information in here will be in the reviewer portal. And did you want to add anything before we move on? No, that's great, Chloe. Great. And if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. We'll also do questions at the end. So I just want to make sure if you have one, we'll get it answered. And also, if you have questions as you start the process and something doesn't make sense, um, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. And um, you will get in touch with us through an email that is grants, G-R-A-N-T-S, at RAC, R-A-C, S tl.org and that will be in the correspondence that you will receive from us um, from Lee. Okay, once you have um, rated each question and provided optional feedback for each of the three review criteria, you will have an overall application rating out of 100 possible points. Um, so then RAC staff will take those ratings and they will be averaged with that of other reviewers for a total application rating out of 100 possible points. And um, this whole key is what that looks like. So if it's exemplary, it means that the applicant provided overwhelming evidence of all three review criteria and that that application is exemplary. And that means that they will get 100% of their request. Um, if it's strong, the applicant provides strong evidence of all three review criteria. The application is strong and they will also get, so we feel like this is very generous. They will also get 100% of their request. If it's good, the applicant provides sufficient evidence of all three review criteria, meaning their application is good and they will receive 100% of their request. If it needs work, that means that the applicant provided limited evidence of all three review criteria and they need work and they are not eligible for funding, so they're not going to receive anything. And then weak means that the applicant provided little to no evidence of all three review criteria and that application is weak and not eligible for funding, and that means that they will not receive funding. So hopefully this will make sense as you're going through it. And again, please don't hesitate to ask questions. Definitely. And thanks, Lee, for putting that email in the chat. Great. So continuing in our step-by-step -step process, this is steps five through nine. So for step five, based on the final rating, artist support grant applicants are deemed eligible for a percentage of their ask based on what we just went through with that rating key. Program support applicant final ratings are analyzed by RAC staff and then moved to panel review process for those applications with a large variance in reviewer ratings. If you've reviewed for us in the past, you know that we used to reconvene all of our um, reviewers for, to review every application. Um, and something that we implemented last year was that we were going to only re reconvene reviewers for applications that had a large variance in the scoring. So applications where maybe reviewers didn't see eye to eye with the same application, we just want to reconvene them to get them back together and try to figure out maybe where somebody went wrong or 
or what was going on. Um, so step six is where we do reconvene the program support reviewers for virtual review meetings as necessary. And we'll kind of talk about what those virtual review meetings look like on the next slide. For step seven, program support ratings are finalized and applicants are deemed eligible for a percentage of their ask. So similar to artist support, they'll go to that funding matrix once we finalized everything following the virtual review meeting. And then these percentages will be shared with the applicants. And if necessary, they may file an appeal with RAC staff. I do want to note here that only program support applicants are eligible to file an appeal. Artist support grants are not eligible to file an appeal, which is why you'll note that kind of steps six through nine have to do more with program support because artist support kind of stops at step five. So for step eight, those appeals filed by program support, if necessary, are reviewed by RAC staff and appeals calls, um, which we'll also talk about in an upcoming slide, um, they're held if necessary. And then finally, in step nine, program support and artist support grant amounts are shared with the public. And then of course, reviewer honorariums are dispersed through bill.com. Um, if you reviewed with us last year, you're, you're familiar with bill.com and that platform. Um, it's essentially a direct deposit um, form that we use to just kind of disperse those honorariums to you as quickly as possible. And then this is for program support only, and this is about the virtual uh, review meetings. Before a virtual review meeting, RAC staff will average all panelist ratings for the organization average rating. Only those with a great variance in the reviewer scores will be reviewed at this meeting. So not every application will go to an applicant review panel meeting. Um, what will happen in this meeting? Applications with a large scoring variance will be reviewed. There is the opportunity to move an organization up or down on the rating scale. And under rare circumstances, a large move can be made up or down if a clear error has been made. Once adjustments, if any, are made, the organization will be sent the final rating and the reviewer comments. Once the organization has their ratings, they have the opportunity to appeal and the review meeting will be recorded and published to the website. Perfect, so I'll walk us through the program support only appeals process. So this is after they receive those final reviews after the virtual review meetings. So applicants, if they're dissatisfied with their final rating or some of the comments, they must have solid grounds for an appeal. Dissatisfaction with a rating or denial of an award is not sufficient grounds for an appeal. Solid grounds for an appeal are based on a misstatement of fact made during the review meeting and reviewer comments that can be evidenced by written information found in the application, or if the applicant can demonstrate that the review of the application was based on criteria or application requirements other than those appearing in the RAC guidelines. New information not originally included in the application cannot be offered as evidence of a misstatement. So it simply must be if there was a misstatement of fact in the virtual review meeting based on what is said in the application. They can't take in outside information to support their argument. If an applicant has grounds for an appeal, an appeal form may be filed with RAC staff. Staff will then review and approve all requests for appeals before convening reviewers for consideration. However, staff approval does not guarantee that the appeal will be approved by the panel or that the original rating will change. So while we may decide to reconvene you for an appeal, you may decide that you were you, you stand by the original rating and you don't want to make any changes, and that's fine too. So should RAC approve the filed, the filed appeal, in a second virtual meeting, RAC staff will submit the appeal to the reviewers. The appeals calls will not be open to the applicants, and the panelists may vote in favor, majority rules, of approving an increase to the final rating. The result of the appeals call will be shared with the applicant in the following week.
pressing the wrong buttons left and right. Um, and now Chloe and I will go over some tips and tricks for reviewing applications. And these are things that we have found by um, by looking at the applications pretty much. And, and I'll start. So um, you can only imagine that sometimes applicants feel least comfortable with the money and numbers part of the application. But it's as important as their narrative and their work samples. Please review the budgets carefully. And for program support applications, please pay attention to the financials. They should all tell a story and support the narrative. Budgets should be what one volunteer lawyer and accountants for the arts accountant calls RAD, R-A-D, realistic, aligned, and detailed. You have seen from their application what they intend to do with the dollars. Does their budget reflect that? And from your understanding, is it realistic? Is it aligned with what they propose in the narrative section? And is it detailed enough for you to understand? If it is not, if it doesn't fulfill those three things, please score accordingly. Another thing about the program support budgets, it is fine for a program support applicant to record in-kind items in their budgets. What's in-kind? <clears throat> in-kind refers to non-cash items gifted to the organization, such as time or equipment or anything like that. Please note that in-kind must be reflected on both sides of the budget, the same amount in revenues as in expenses. For program support, please pay attention to the financials. The, again, the financials are reflections that should be consistent with what the applicant says about not only their programs, but also about good governance. RAC has requested that program support applicants upload financials for the two most recently completed fiscal years. Those financials include a balance sheet, which outlines resources versus obligations and a statement of activities, which indicates cash in and cash out for those time periods. If the applicant does not have two years of financials that provide you with a solid picture of their organization, please score accordingly. Now, for the first time this year, we are asking that all applicants um, think about a DEI, a diversity, equity, and inclusion statement, policy, or plan. Um, DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility is a hallmark for RAC's work in our community. This year, what we are looking for is setting up benchmarks for the future, as we would like to see progress year over year in our applicants, in our artists, and in our organizations, that they put their money where their mouth is. Some of the uploaded statements may be a first attempt to lay out their commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Please note if their efforts are reflected throughout their personal agency, their organization, and their programmatic efforts, and score accordingly. Chloe, what do you got to say? Yeah, I don't have as much as that, which is wonderful, but I would like to say that, you know, we do check for eligibility, but our eligibility requirements are, you know, they're pretty slim. So, for example, you know, Anne mentioned earlier in the in the presentation that, you know, there are some artist support grantees that have submitted a professional resume rather than one that clearly states when they've presented their artistic work to the public. So if they're, you know... If they did get through, we deemed them eligible for your review. So there may be missing aspects of an application in comparison to other applications. And we allowed them through. So we rely on reviewers to review and rate those applications accordingly. So if there are missing aspects, please do complete the review, um, but just know that you can read and rate them as you see fit based on the review criteria. Great, thanks, Chloe. Sure. And now we're on to reviewer roles and responsibilities. So in your role as a reviewer, you'll have about three weeks to complete your reviews and eligible reviewers will receive a $200 honorarium. And eligible means that you, um, you've completed all of your application ratings and they've been complete and turned in on time. 
And then your responsibilities as an applicant reviewer is prior to reading and rating any assigned applications to declare all actual or apparent conflicts of interest. And so how this will work, we can kind of talk about it more a little bit later in the presentation, but you'll be assigned your list of applications to review, and then you'll be sent a conflict of interest form. So in looking at the ones that have been assigned to you for your review, you'll want to declare any conflicts of interest that are potential in that list on that form and return it to us. And you'll be excused from reviewing those applications and we'll assign them to other reviewers or use the, um, the average from other reviewers to provide that rating. You'll want to read all written applications and view supplementary materials provided. You'll want to rate all the assigned applications fairly and based on the review criteria, and we'll ask that you avoid bias. We'll ask that you provide detailed notes for each of the application review criteria. And actually, this is maybe a little typo in here because you'll have the opportunity to provide feedback for every question. So we don't require you to provide feedback for every question, but if there is something that you would like the applicant to take away, it would be beneficial to have those detailed notes for whatever question you want to comment on. And then finally, to commit to completion of reviews and to finish by the communicated deadline. Okay, while reading and rating, be objective, be consistent, and be confidential. Um, by object objective, we mean review only the application materials provided by the applicant, leave outside knowledge of the organization's artists or collectives at the door, use only the provided review criteria as the basis for rating. Be consistent, be consistent in your rating, Use the same rigor with each application. Consider all materials when rating and consistently apply all review criteria to each application. And then the confidential part. During the reading period, please don't discuss applications with other readers and please don't share applicant information or artist ratings with applicants or the general public. While you're note-taking, we ask that you're succinct and that you use direct language. We ask you to be objective and factual, not interpretive of the information, and to write as if they'll be read by the applying organization, artist, or collective. And just to keep in mind that your comments can be shared anonymously with the applicants upon request. We do not have it built into our process anywhere to share those comments with the applicants, um, but should they ask for them, we do like to turn them over because we got, we know you guys do the hard work to give them you know, good, consistent feedback. Um, so we will share those anonymously upon request. And then finally, remember the purpose of your notes is to help you, the reviewer, identify the reason for your rating and to inform RAC staff and or the grants committee of your reasoning. So we will review your comments. Um, so they're very helpful to us because we don't, we can't have possibly the time to review all of these applications as thoroughly as you will. Um, so we appreciate those comments. And then finally, other items, as I mentioned, the confirmation form, um, or sorry, the confirmation form is separate from the conflict of interest form. The confirmation form um, will just confirm for us that you have attended this orientation and that you've attended the bias training, um, which will happen on Thursday. They'll both be recorded and up on the website so you can watch them at any time that works for you. Um, although we would love it if you could be in person um, for our bias training on Thursday. And by in person, I mean virtually present. Um, we'll ask um, about website mentions. So as a reviewer, we will thank you by mentioning your name on the website after reviews are completed. Um, this form will allow you the opportunity to accept or you know, just to say you don't want your name on the website. And then finally, the honorarium confirmation. So if you do want to receive the $200 for your service, you can confirm that on the confirmation form. And then of course, the conflict of interest form allows you to identify any conflicts in the list of applicants that you have, or on the list of applications that you have been assigned. Right. And those will be sent out both with assignments, um, either later this week or early next week. Right. 
Great, thanks, Chloe. Um, I'm going to start with questions that have been submitted through the chat and Q and A. Um, Chloe, are the comments that an that a reviewer makes on each application shared directly with the applicants? No, so they're not shared directly with the applicants. Um, we did kind of mention in just a previous slide that if they ask for them, they will be shared with them. Um, but we don't, if, as a part of our process, automatically send out your comments to the applicants. And then Amanda asks, once we initially review an application, can we make any changes to our ratings the next day after reviewing other applications? Hmm. So I, you, you can before the deadline. You couldn't after the deadline for reviews is due. So you could submit your ratings for a review, um, and then you could ask, you know, myself, Lee, or Ann to make a change to those ratings, but we wouldn't be able to do that after the final deadline for application or for application ratings. Um, and then Gary asks, could you explain what you mean by capacity and sustainability? Um, and so what we say there, I think, Gary, you will find pretty well outlined in the grants guidelines. Um, and so we say, capacity and sustainability in terms of a program support application would be an organization that intentionally plans for program capacity and sustainability. And you will be able to understand that through their um, through their budget and their organizational health worksheet, which is part of the program support. Um, and artist support is similar, Anne. It's the artist is intentional about artistic practice. Um, capacity and sustainability, which just, you know, are they being intentional about their budget? Um, do they have a clear and ongoing commitment to planning and goal setting? Um, those questions we're hoping that they answer within those three sections or those three questions underneath capacity and sustainability. Great. Thanks, Chloe. And then the other thing that we say um, is that when we ask for um, a program growth and development statement. Um, what we say is that that's a statement that complements what is known about the program and the information provided in the program budget, and that they demonstrate a plan or desire to implement innovative approaches to organizational operations and funding, and that the program planning and development includes goal setting, marketing, budgeting, and evaluation, and that those are appropriate to the scope of the project. And if you have any other questions, I hope that answers your question, Gary. Um, let us know. Um, I think in the chat. Do we want to go through the chat now? Yeah. Okay. Christy asked, should an application be completely reviewed if mandatory documentation was not provided or does RAC weed out those applicants? Um, we did not have a... When there were pre-applications, we were able to go back in and say, you need to do this, this, and this, and upload these things. We have not had a chance because of the short timeline to go through and make sure all those um, all of those documents are uploaded. So I leave that to your critical eye and your integrity as a reviewer to score um, the best way possible. And hopefully all of those documents will be uploaded in all of the applications. Great. Sarah asked, how many applications are typically assigned? Oh, boy. What do you think, Chloe? We're going to try to make that. Um... I mean, last year at most, I think someone reviewed 45 applications, and that is high, and we're trying to avoid that this year, and we have a much bigger pool of reviewers this year. So I'm, I'm really guessing it could be around 20 to 30 applications at most. Um, and then Cynthia asked, is the honorarium a per application rate or total? That's a total. Um, and it's really just, we know that $200 is like that you deserve a lot more, but it is just acknowledgement of your service to the community and you're helping us at RAC. Um, and is there a link to join the bias training? You will receive that link if you have not already for the um, bias awareness training that's taking place on Thursday at from 3.30 to 5. And um, our facilitator on that day will be Rudy Nickens. 
Andrew um, says, apologies if this was already explained, is there a certain amount of applications each reviewer needs to review? Um, we do ask that you review, you complete all of the reviews you've been assigned. Um, but, you know, if you are assigned, you know, 20 applications and you just don't possibly have time, please let us know as soon as possible and we'll ask another reviewer to review those. And then Christina asked, how are the final percentages determined? Do you want to talk about that, Chloe? Yeah, I think, well, and I'm, I'm hoping she means the percentages for which an application is eligible. So each organization or individual artist or collective ask for um, an amount of money for artist support grants, it maxes out at $7,500 and for program support, it maxes out at $15,000. Um, that'll be based on that applicant rating key. Um, so what we'll do is you'll assign um, a point amount for each question, and then those will be totaled at the end of an application for your application rating total for that application. And then we'll use other reviewers application totals for that application to come up with an average to use in that rating key to kind of let us know what percent of their ask they're eligible for. I hope that answered your question. Great. Let us know if it doesn't. Yeah, please do. Um, David asks, <clears throat> are there any cost spending listed on the applications that are typically limited or discouraged, whether high administration costs or funds for transportation for program clients, et cetera, or are application guidelines pretty flexible? You'll notice on our website, um, and I think there's a link to that in the guidelines, that there are things that... Um, that applicants and grantees are not allowed to spend their money on for program support. That is, um, that's we they can't ask us for money for fundraisers, um, for artist support. They can't take vacations. Um, those are just a couple of the um, examples for that. But you'll find that there's a link on the website to that those limitations. Kathy asks, um, one of your slides says non-graduate students requirement, but then says the artist is not enrolled as a full-time undergraduate student. Are graduate students eligible? Our eligibility requirement is that the artist is not enrolled as a full-time undergraduate student. By that definition, graduate students would be eligible. It's just not full-time undergraduate students. Thank you, Kathy. Um, Destiny asked, what is critical review? Um, a critical review is when, let's say, um, Circus Flora receives um, a review by a critic or somebody that publishes something online, um, in a newspaper, a review on the radio about their performances. And that is optional because we know that, you know, the journalistic field right now is um, a little bit limited and not as um, as able, capable of doing critical reviews as they used to be. Great. I'm going to jump down to Christina here. Um, she asked, on average, how many reviewers are there per application? And that really varies from program support and artist support. So typically, um, last year, we had um, a couple of reviewers for an artist support grant application and like around five to seven per a program support application. This year, it will look a little different and we're still working to assign those panels, um, but do keep in mind, it'll be roughly five to seven people per application. Right, thanks, Chloe. Sure. Um, Kathleen asks, when do we know if we've been accepted as a reviewer? Well, you're all accepted, um, but we just don't know if we'll need you for this grants round and you should hear from us by the end of the day on Friday if you will be a part of the process for this particular grant cycle, um, which means that if you are asked to be a reviewer for the ARPA funds that are coming up, that we may have a little bit more training for you, but you will already have um, um, done your requirement for the bias awareness training and that if and it'll probably the rest of it like this orientation training will be very similar so we won't ask for too much more of your time 
Lauren asks, are fiscally sponsored projects eligible for program funding? Yes, they are. They are required to upload a fiscal sponsor, a letter from their fiscal sponsor, um, stating that the organization is aware that they are a fiscal sponsor for this grant. Um, and is there anything else that they have to do having a fiscal sponsor? No, you know, what I like to see in terms of a fiscal sponsor, though, once they have that fiscal sponsorship letter, I let, let's say that they ask um, the United Way to be their fiscal sponsor. United Way will write a very nice letter saying they're willing to be the fiscal sponsor for that, that the money from RAC can go to them for this particular project. And then they would also upload the United Way's board. But I also like to see if that project has its own advisory board, I think it's a good idea for them to upload that. Um, and the budget should be the budget for the project itself. Um, but those are the things about fiscal sponsorship. But, oh, and then... I also think that it's a good idea in the organizational health worksheet that there's some mention of the project and that organizational health as well. Great. Don asks, what, oh, sorry, I skipped, skipped one here. Elaine asks, as a follow-up to Christina's question, does everyone who is eligible for 100% according to the chart actually receive 100% of their ask, or is it tied more to the actual score? For example, if the average score ends up being 85, do they get an 85% of their ask? I mean, the short answer to that question is no. It's the, the percentage of, well, it's kind of hard because their funding is obviously the percentage that they're eligible for is based on their score. Um, but from an in, like, I guess from our perspective, we fund from the top down based on the scores. So it's not, it's not contingent. Like if they get an 85%, they can only get 85% of their score or of their request. I hope I'm making sense. I thought that made sense. Yeah. But if it doesn't, please speak up because yeah, we're on the inside know. here. Yeah. Um, Cynthia asks, can a fiscal sponsor be a sponsor on more than one application? Yes. Did we miss anybody? I think I kept missing Don's question, which is, what is the deadline to have all reviews completed and submitted to RAC? And that is Monday, May 8th. Reviewer ratings are due Monday, May 8th. It's an exciting time. <laughs> Very exciting. And you should be assigned those applications by the end of the day on Friday. Are there any other questions? I have a question. I was trying to type it into my chat. But I typed it, but I don't know how to send. So my question is, I'm an old guy, so please forgive me. <laughs> um, I've been in other meetings. What is RAC's definition of capacity? Because some people believe that's resources. And I was in a meeting where they said it really was about money. Um, I think that I um, explained that a little bit ago, Clavon. And um, take a look at the, um, in the guidelines or in the, in the scoring rubric, take a look at questions seven, eight, and nine. And I think we really, hopefully, we very much do address what we mean by that. Um, and that does mean a lot about resources. Um, it means more about resources than the money. I mean, do they have do they have the capacity to do the programs that they are set about to do? And um, and we ask a number of questions to help us understand that capacity. Great. We'll move on to the next. Is that helpful, Clavon? Yeah, that's helpful. I'll, I'll go back to the Rubik uh, when I can find it, okay? Great. All right. Yeah, and we can send it to you too if you can't find it. So just email us at grants at racstl.org. Um, we did have a question from Madeline in the chat. Um, would we be assigned new applications after April 25th? You would not. 
You'll not receive um, more applications throughout the process. The applications that you're assigned, hopefully by Friday, um, are exactly the, the applications you'll be responsible for, um, for turning in ratings on May 8th. Um, okay. Kath Kathleen asks, um, I'm going to be gone May 3rd through um, the 8th. Will I have time to review all of the grants? Um, I would say that's really, really up to you, Kathleen. If you feel that you're unable to get them done, um, you could just recuse yourself from this year's round of reviews. Um, or if, you know, it's, it's easier for us um, if you let us know in advance of receiving the applications. I will say that. And do you have anything to add for that? No, I think that's absolutely right. You're the, you know how to best spend your own time. I'm going to check the Q&A just to make sure there aren't any more in there. Um, all right, we're good. Okay, last call for questions. I actually have a question, but I think it would be better if I talk it than type it. Um, sure. So there, I remember on one of the forms that we filled out about the panel review meetings, um, will we be kind of notified if we're one of the, the people that needs to happen? And then is there a certain date that those will occur on or will it be just one of those dates that were in that list? Yeah, that's a really good question, Destiny. Um, I will say, yeah, and it, it's... It, it's a curious question. We wanted to because we won't know if there's a, if we need to call those panel meetings until we get your scores on May the eighth. But what we wanted to do was to ask to ask the panel the reviewers to set aside that time so that we know who could be available on on possible dates. So we're going to pay attention to that um, because we won't know how many meetings, which applications will have to go to a review panel until after the eighth. Okay, so and I know um, that's very vague, but I don't know. No, no, no. I totally understand. Um, could I email the email to to refine those dates then? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, Great. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh huh. Do you need that email address again? No, I got it. Okay. Great. Thanks. Sure. Other questions? Okay. If you have other questions, don't hesitate to email us at grants at R-A-C-S-T-L dot O-R-G. We can't tell you how much we appreciate your time for the past hour. Um, it means a whole lot to us. And you will hear from us by the end of the week. Um, well, you will. if you don't hear from us by the end of the week, it means we didn't need your service this time around. Um, but we could be calling on you sometime later this year to help with the ARPA grant funds, but we will need quite a few reviewers. So I think you'll be hearing from us. Thanks a million. Thanks everyone for being Oh, and don't forget, there'll be that short um, questionnaire that are, is going to pop up after you um, sign out of here. So please answer those questions so we can make these trainings better. And we'll see you on Thursday with, uh, with Rudy Nickens. Thank Thanks. you, everyone. Thank you.